I was going to tell you, I had a thought, but then I thought that was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> My thought, ooh. But this is a funny little lesson, and I'm hoping I can draw it together. With God's help, I can. So let's stand, if you will. Father God, we do thank you for the privilege and honor to be here today. We thank you, Lord, for the weather. I thank you, Lord, for the snow. And, Lord, I just pray that you would just give us more. And, Father, I pray, though, today that you would help me to get your words in the right way, Lord, that we may get the, the idea of what you want, that we, can, that we can live the life that you would have us to have. I pray, God, for the people who are sick that, does not come, that has not come, that your healing hand would go there and lift them up. For the ones that are discouraged, Lord, that you would encourage them by the word. For we who have the problems or have trials and, and situations, Lord, we just pray that you would just undertake. For anyone here today, Lord, that may not be feeling well, I pray that your healing hand would come down upon them. If they need to make a decision, Lord, today would be the day that you would lead, guide, and direct them. I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you that I can read it and study it and apply it. And I thank you, Lord, that I have the privilege of doing the best I can with your help. I ask, Lord, that you would just minister to all of us through your word today. Help us, Lord, to say it's been good to be in your house. And, Lord, we just ask these things in your name. And everyone said, Amen. As I was asking the Lord what to do, and when Wednesday comes and I'm still asking, I get a little jittery. And I think of two scriptures, one that I use all the time or pretty much the time. In John 14:14, 14, 14, it says, If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will give it. I stand on that. I believe it. And then people would talk to me and they say about prayer, I said, he just says, ask and he will give it. And then there is another scripture that I don't quite use as much. And that's the one in Second Samuel that says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Because I have a problem with obedience. Thank you, Jason. Because I was going to say, I know I'm the only one that does that. I have always had the problem of being told to do something, and I say, oh, yeah, well, we'll see about that. The only one I did not say that to, and that was probably my mom. I didn't say that to her. But that's where we are. We pick out scriptures, what we like, and when we don't look at the, the things that we don't like. And I'm going to refer back a little bit to Chris's message Sunday. And this is what the Lord told me. And he told me this in a way that as I was searching through the Bible, I read a sentence, and it said, effort demands sometimes to get a blessing. Effort demands sometimes that we get a blessing. You say, do you understand that? The first time I, that the Lord showed me, the first thing that I thought about was the woman with the issue of blood. I got three scriptures. I would like somebody to take Math, Matthew 9, 20, 21. Mark 5, 25 through 27, and Luke 8, 43 through 44. Now, all of these are on the same Situation. It's all about the woman with the issue of blood. But I want to point out something. We all talk about her faith, and she had faith. But I want to look at something else. The first one, Matthew. Got it? Uh, 
Okay, go ahead. Whoever's got it. Okay, verse, was that 20? Do 20. Okay, somebody take, who's got Mark? Go ahead. 25 through 27. Verse 28. Okay. Luke 8. Anybody got it? 8, 43, 44. Anybody got it? Okay, all three were seen by three different men. They all said that she had the issue of blood. They all said that she had went to many doctors but could not get better but they all said different where she touched him one said in my bible the hem of his garment one said touch the garment and one said the border what did yours say dan <laughs> What I'm saying is, we talk about her faith. It says she heard Jesus. Everybody knew Jesus. And so one said, she touched his garment. One said, in my Bible, she touched the hem of his garment. And I was walking, I I tried to walk every day, and I was walking, I said, Lord, can you imagine how low that woman had to get if she touched the hem of your garment? I mean, if that is not effort, if that is not, and that's the whole point of here, the effort of a blessing, how much are you going to do to make something that you can get blessed from God? How many times does, does the pastor say, come down here? Now, it's easy for some people who just hop up and come down, but there's other people like me who don't hop up and who don't come down. It's hard for me to do that. But if I would make an effort, you see, we say, I should have, I could have, I would have. If I had only tried. Tried is trying to do something, making an effort. An effort. We want God to, Lord, whatever I ask, I know you will give it to me, so give it to me. But when he tells us to do something, to make an effort, to receive it, we ask, well, should I do that? I don't know, if I, I don't know about that. What, what should I do? An effort. Do you make an effort? And I thought of these things that, that Chris said. You see, in Psalms 23, it says, the Lord is my Shepherd, shepherd people do not produce sheep. Shepherd produces the food that the sheep need. It is the sheep that produces sheep. And it takes effort. And I think maybe, Lord, this is for me. 
because I don't do a lot of things. Well, I'll tell you one thing I do do, and that's pray. That doesn't take effort on my part because I like doing it. What takes effort? How many read your Bible? Now, I don't say study. I said read. How many read your Bible? How many understands what you read? How many read it just to be reading it? It takes an effort to sit down and read your Bible and to get it through your head. I personally don't like to read. And it takes effort for me to read the Bible. Well, yeah, all look at me and say, well, <laughs> look at you. Yeah, look at me. I am the only, no, Lord, forgive me. I am not the only one, but I'm pretty close to being the one that's honest here. It takes a lot for me to sit down and just to read the Bible. It takes nothing for me to open it up and start studying and study for two hours and not even know that the time had passed. You see the effort. The effort brings a blessing. And that's what God is telling. We here are sheep. And in order to get these things that Chris said, and I had them all written down, but I didn't bring it. So how many remembers anything what he said? <laughs> I don't sound good, does it? <laughs> But I'm going to tell you what I remember, the last one. You got the notes? Okay, let's see. What does one say? The second one? What was that? Hunger to live right? See, uh, effort. Number three. Effort. Number four. Effort. Number five. Effort. Number six. Effort. Let me tell you. We want to get rid of a lot of things, but money is not one of them. You're talking about somebody who, who had to learn. Had to learn. Is there another one? All right. Effort. Effort. Let me tell you, every one of us could be a worker. But my effort isn't the work. I thought of this, I was watching the TV and, and there was an advertisement and this man was sitting and he said, I hear, my, I hear my chair calling me. And I said, that man is talking to my voice. He is talking to me because my easy chair just calls my name. Isn't that something? How well the TV knows me. Effort. And I believe this is what God wants us to hear. I believe this is what he wants us to know. This is a new year. We have 52 weeks to get this, or 51 now, whatever, to get this right. Is there another one? All right. Oh, my goodness. Effort. Effort. And let me tell you one thing. Chris won't tell you this, but I can read his mind. And I, I know this is true because I heard a little joke one time, and I'm going to share it with you. And, Chris, you, you tell me if this is wrong or not. There was a young couple, and they was getting ready to go to church. And the wife had gotten up, and she was ready. And she kept saying, honey, it's time for you to go to church. Come on, let's go. Get up. And he said, I don't want to get up. She said, wait a few minutes to go back. She said, you need to get up. we got to go to church. And he said, I don't want to go. I don't, I don't feel like going to church. She said, you need to go to church. And he said, why? And she said, because you're the pastor. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
He wouldn't admit that if that was, but let me tell you, that's what people do. There are days, exactly. There are days. Effort. Effort. This lady who touched the hem of God, whether it to his hem or the, or the garment or whatever it was, she had to press through that crowd and get there. And if she touched the hem, she was down on her knees, crawling through. Let me tell you, that's effort. We want to be better in 24. We want to do more in 24. Let me tell you, it takes effort. Got another one? Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't pledge anything. I don't say. He says, how many will pray for this? And the other hands go up like this. And I don't. Because I am human. And I forget. And I could sit down and I could pray, but I would forget to pray for whatever. I don't say that. I just make it a habit to pray. Effort. We're so busy. Before we know it, the day is gone and I'm too tired. It takes an effort. Next one. Last one. That's the one I remembered. That is what I remember. Draw closer to the Lord. Not the shepherd, not the congregation, not to anybody else, but to God. And that takes effort. That means that you have to take time to learn how to pray. And if you need to set a time, you better do it. I'm going to tell you, Chasta has this little thing on her wrist that's called a watch. Now, I think when I have my watch on my wrist, it tells me what time it is. She tells her when to eat, when not to eat, who, when to put Josh to bed, when to get him up, where to go, when to come back. And that, that little thing on her, and she does it. If that's what it takes to get closer to God, do it. Effort. The little lady that went in to get healed touched. It doesn't matter where she touched him. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where we say, reach out and touch the Lord. All the hands go up. Do you expect to touch him? I do. And I'll tell you why, because I've told you this before. The incident back there, and I, I sat there with my arms folded and, and saying, well, everybody else getting blessed, but I'm not getting blessed. If you want me to, let, let me show, if you want me to get blessed, Lord, then you show me. And I raised one hand, and then I raised two hands, and I can sit back there in that corner and feel the touch of God touching my hand. I'm telling you, a touch from the Lord. It does not matter where you touch him. You just have to touch him. Make an effort. An effort. And as I was talking to the Lord, I said, Lord, I need more scriptures than that. I didn't think I could go a half hour or not, but I think I could. But he told me, or I got this thought, and I just, I blamed him, of Naaman. 2 Kings, chapter 5. You all know it. We've heard it and heard it and heard it. We all know it. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Right. The effort. But when you when it's preached, it's not talking about it. It talks about her faith and what she did. But it took effort. Naaman. Naaman was a commander in the army of Syria. He worked close to the to the the king. 
he was brave and well known and respected, but he was a leper. I look up leprosy, and, and, and it's not a pretty little disease. And it kind of runny sores and stinky, and you don't want to be around it. And while he was there, at wherever he was, the Arab, the people in the Syria army went out and captured the little girl, you know that, and she became the maid with her, with his wife. And the little girl was talking to the wife and said, if the master would go down to the prophet, he would be healed. The wife goes to to Naaman and said, listen, that little girl said, if you go down to the prophet, you'll be healed. He goes to the king and he said, you know what? If I go down to the prophet, I'll be healed. And the king said, well, you go ahead and go and I'll send a letter. And I thought, you better not send a letter this time because <laughs> you get that way before the letter will. So the letter goes to the king of Israel. And he says, I have been told that if he would come down to you, you could heal him. And the, the, the king got mad. He said, what do you think I can do? You know what? When we come down here, Chris always says, listen, I am not the one to do the healing. We have to know that the people are not doing the healing. When I was young, there used to be a a nursing home in Buck Creek. And the lady had some kind of an ailment. She could not hardly walk. She could walk, but not very much. And at that time, Brother Oral Roberts was coming, and he was big, and he was known for healing. And, and so he was going to come to Indianapolis. And she said, told me, she said, he was going to come, and I was going to go down there, and he's going to pray for me, and I'm going to be healed. She went down there. She got in prayer line. He prayed for her. She got healed. She was telling me this. She said, and I went down there, and he got me healed. He didn't get her healed. It's God, but we all think the people who's doing it lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Not us. Our effort is coming down. The other effort is whoever's praying for you is playing the hand, putting a hand on it. God is doing all the effort, but he wants us to put the effort in. He wants us to come down. He wants us to do things. It shows us that we want him to bless us, and we want to be like him. And obedience is better than sacrifice. And all many times I said, Lord, I should have done that. I should have done that. I should have went there. I would have went there. All kinds of excuses. We have all kinds of excuses for not being effort, for not having effort. We got all kinds of excuses. So Naaman goes down, and he's, he's pretty well liked, and he thinks he's something. Let me tell you, we all think we're somebody, right? Yes. Yeah, we are somebody. Do what? Exactly. 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 Effort. Effort. How bad do you want something? How bad do you want all these things? How bad do you want to see the church grow? How bad do you want to get close to God? How bad? It takes effort. We saw it with the little lady. Now we're going to see it with, with Naaman because he goes down and he knocks on the door and the, the servant comes down and, and he says, I want to see the prophet. And, and so he goes tells him and tells him the situation. And he says, go down to the river Jordan and dip. 
Go down there. You know what he said? Well, he just came down and saw me. You, do you know who I am? Well, she didn't, we, I have to say, well, she didn't even say hi to me. Well, he didn't even shake my hand. Who cares? God doesn't bless you for what I do. He blesses you for what you do. So he said, I, there are plenty of other clean rivers I could go to. Doesn't that sound like, God, there's so many other things I could do. And the little girl, how brought she was, she said, if he would ask you to do big things, you'd done it, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, because the bigger things, the more glory we get. Yes. Yeah, I, I go teach a class because I'll be somebody. I'll go sing a song because I'll be somebody. I'll, I'll do this because I'll be somebody. Let me tell you, God looks down on us and we're all equal. I don't care how many do you teach. I don't care how many songs you sing. I don't care how many instruments you play. You're all the same. I'm sorry, you ha you're not God's favorite. I am. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just kidding, Lord. Let me tell you. So he goes down to the river. Effort. First to go there. Second to go down. Get into the water. Step into the water. Get a little deeper. Listen, as deep as I want to get into water is up to here. I don't want to go any farther. So he goes in. The prophet has told him where to go. He told him what was going to happen when he got there. He told him to go now. But Naaman said, no. Nah. The little girl said, but if it was great. So he makes up his mind, okay. Has God ever dealt with you? And you always say, well, okay. Listen, me and God always have talking because what he tells me to teach, I'm saying, Lord, are you sure? Are you sure? Because I know my qualifications. And I'm not qualified. But God is. When they ask for help, you say, I can't do that. Yes, you can. We can do anything we set our mind to with effort. So he goes down to this river. He gets in that dirty old muddy Jordan, and he goes down. And I can just see him. Oh, my goodness. Here I am in this water. It's dirty, and I went down once, and now I've got to go again. So I go again. Oh, my goodness. Get it over, Lord. But he said seven times because seven is God's number. So he goes down again and again. And I imagine, it doesn't say it, but I imagine by six times, if it was me, I'd say, I give up. I am tired of this. I'm done in this old dirty water. I'm going to get out of here. If God wanted to heal me, he'd have done it before. But he sucked it up. And he went down again. And when he went down again, he came up clean. Effort. Something he did not want to do. Something he thought he deserved better. But effort. With the effort came the blessing. How much effort do we give in serving God? Last week, Chris quoted a scripture. If you have no vision, the people perish. That's on him. He is the shepherd. He is the leader. He has to have the vision. We are the sheep. 
we are the ones who puts the effort to see this church grow, to see people get filled with the Holy Spirit. But we cannot do it unless we fulfill the last one, which was what? Draw closer to God. Because we never should get full. Never. One lady spoke up and she said, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. But I leak. I said, you leak? Because I always run out and I have to go get refilled. You get refilled. You get new life. Only if you have effort to get up out of that chair, and I'm listening, Laura, get up out of that chair and do something. Because sheep beget sheep, not the shepherd. If we want more of God personally, we need to get down and make an effort. If we want to see our church grow, we need to get down and make effort. If we want to see anything that takes a little bit of work, we need to get some effort in our body. There was a young man who was helping an older man to wash his car, and there came a, a, a really bad spot. And this young man said, I can't get this off. And, and the, man, the older man said, well, you need a little elbow grease. So he gets up, and the man said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to the store and get some elbow grease. We need to get to the store and get some elbow grease. We need to go to the store and get some elbow grease. Hi there. Oh. We need to go to the store and get some elbow grease, people. We need to get where we can get some effort. And we need to put the effort to work. If we want to see more in 24, people, me, we need to make an effort. And I believe wholeheartedly that God gave me this. Because I needed it. Y'all say amen to that? Y'all believe I need it. That's true. But you don't accept help unless you see the need. We need to see where God needs to bless us. And then we need to make an effort to go and touch the garment of the one who will give you the strength that we need. Effort, people. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And it says something, the last, that's kind of in the middle. It says to hearken. And then it says something about a lamb or a ram or something, which means that if you hearken, you don't have to make the sacrifice. You don't have to make a sacrifice. If you are obedient to God and do what he says, if I'm obedient to God, what he says, I'm going to bless me, and I'm not going to have to ask for forgiveness. And I do ask for forgiveness. Lord, forgive me for what I did, and forgive me for what I didn't do, and I should have done. Because I say, I should have, I could have, and I would have if I had only paid attention. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And we need to put in ourselves like the little lady and see and be determined that there is no other way that this church that I, that you, are going to grow unless we put effort to touch the hem, the garment, the border, or whatever it takes to touch the Lord. 
Father God, I thank you for this time. I thank you, Lord, for your word. And I pray that I have done a halfway decent job. But, Lord, let the Holy Spirit take it and work on each and every one of us, Lord, that we can put effort to be a better, closer person, a better witness, a better teacher, a better anything that you want us to be. Help us to see where we are short in coming to you. And, Lord, help us to put forth the effort to be better. I thank you for all of these people, and I pray, God, that you will bless each and every one of them. And I ask, Lord, as we go into the second uh, uh, meeting, Lord, service, that you would let the Holy Spirit just move. And help us, Lord, to make an effort to let the Holy Spirit have his way. I thank you, Lord, for all of this, and I ask these things in your name, and everyone said, amen.